Fabrizio from Statebox here. Uh, in the previous video, I showed you how to model the Dunning philosopher's problem using patronets. This time, we are looking at a slightly more complicated example. In particular, we are trying to model uh, a smart contract on a blockchain, such as Ethereum, uh, to do um, crypto gambling. So the idea is that you have users placing bets. You want to calculate some random number to see if they won or lost the bet and pay them if you have to. So, um, as you see, the net is a bit more complicated and I marked uh, some particular uh, transitions with colors. Uh, that's in particular this transition, which is an initial transition. That means there are no inbound places, so this can fire as many times as you want. And this is because this represents users placing bets. So each user can fire it when they place a bet. And these are final transitions that burn tokens, uh, no output places. Uh, and these are basically fired when a bet is honored or rejected, as you will see, will see shortly. So let's suppose that a user places a bet. So two tokens appear here. Now what we have to do is we have to check if the bet can be covered or not. So if we have enough money on the contract to pay the user back in case the user wins. Um, to do this, we need to obtain the contract balance first. And then either we cannot cover the bet and we go here and pay the user back with the money that he bet, or we can. In this case, we are here. Now, what happens is that uh, we can cover the bet, fine. Uh, we need to generate the random number. To do this, we will use a oracle. That is basically another contract that you call and the contract calls you back once uh, the random number is calculated. There are many services already online on Ethereum that do this. Uh, so what we need to do is that we need to obtain the Oracle address we have in memory. We have to calculate the fee that we have to pay to the Oracle contract to get the random number. And then we have to send the random number request. As I said, now the Oracle is supposed to call you back. Uh, so if this happens, then we get here. If it doesn't happen, because maybe the Oracle is down, then we have a timeout uh, transition here that fires. Now we can decide to retry the procedure or to adopt a fallback strategy and basically skip the Oracle part in favor of some other way of calculating the outcome. If in uh, the other case, the Oracle calls us back, then we are here. Uh, usually the random number from the Oracle is provided along with the proof uh, to show that the random number is not tampered with. So we can uh, verify uh, this proof, check it, and if the proof fails, then again, we have to use some sort of fallback strategy. Uh, if the proof passes, then no problem, we are here. And now we can use the random number uh, obtained to calculate the result of the bet and finally, boom, pay the user back and user gets money. Uh, now, if you look at this carefully, uh, I intentionally put a little error in this net. So when we are here and we can cover the bet, um, what we have to do is obtain the Oracle address. But what if the address is undefined? I put a transition here that says undefined, sorry. So we go here and we pay the user bet because we can't process the bet. But you see, that the way I implemented it is not really working because this token stays here in place. So this token will stay in the net forever and will, we will not be able to get rid of it. So you can see that probably a more correct way of implementing this is like this. So when address is undefined, the bet is automatically burned. Um, now we get rid also of this and everything is fine. So why this is useful? Uh, you can see that uh, in this setting, we are basically programming in a behavior and goal-oriented fashion. We didn't write a single line of code. We are just lying down the skeleton of our smart contract. And as you can see, we can already check about some properties. Like we can already be aware that doing this address verification without taking care of this token here doesn't make any sense. All these kind of checks can be performed uh, formally using um, tools that are already out there. So these analyses uh, can be automated. This is super good because we can basically draft the net, check that the net has some properties, and only then develop the code, filling basically these transitions with meaning. 
Um, another thing uh, probably worth pointing out is that this timeout transition here, for instance, has to fire only when the token is of a certain age. It can't fire continuously, always. Otherwise, we would never be able to use this one. Um, similarly, this transition should be fired only by the Oracle address. Um, otherwise, someone else could impersonate the Oracle and there, was, there would be no purpose. The system would be very insecure. So this shows you that uh, this formalism is probably a bit simplistic, but this is not a problem because there are extensions of patronets that allow us to take care of timeouts or time transitions and role transitions where different transitions have to be called by a specific role. This is just to give you the gist of how this stuff works. Uh, and I think that's all for now. Uh, now you can basically start practicing and try to model uh, stuff you know about in uh, process-oriented terms using Petronet. Let me know how it goes. Goodbye.